Today I wanted to uh, talk about one of the uh, the new downloads we have available for a lot of our NAS um, and that's our public beta of uh, QTS or QUTS Hero uh, 5.0.1 um, So I've got it applied here to a TVS-H1288X, uh, the QUTS Hero version um, but if I go to the uh, the download center for this NAS um, there are a couple of options here so you can choose for QTS or QUTS Hero for this particular NAS um, if your NAS only supports QTS, you'll only see the uh, the download option for, for QTS. Um, so for today, I'm going to really talk through a bunch of these release note options, a few highlights that I've picked out. Anybody that wants to read the full list, um, you're welcome to come here and hit these little speech bubbles to the right-hand side, and it will pull out um, the, the full list. It's slightly different from QTS to QUTS here. There's a few things specific to each OS, um, so you can check which one that you need to there. Um, if you do want to download it, there are a couple of ways to get it. You can either apply it manually um, in the firmware update section and do a, a manual installation by browsing to it. Um, or you can go into the firmware update tab and if you scroll down, there are options here to notify me when beta firmware updates are available and you can have it applied there as well. So th those are the, uh, the, really, the, the two options to do it. Uh, now a couple of warnings, um, if you're doing this on a, uh, a NAS upgrade from a NAS that you already have, um, there's less, uh, less warnings needed, but if you're setting up a new NAS out of the box um, and the first storage that you create uh, is with this 501 beta firmware, you can never go back to an earlier version, specifically with the Hero versions. Um, so with QUTS Hero, we've changed a few things with the file system. I'll get to that a bit later on, um, but it will become apparent, but you cannot roll back. Uh, the storage will basically not mount on older versions. If you are moving from an older version up, well, the storage you've got created was created with the, uh, the older original firmware, so uh, no problem to roll back from that one. But any storage pools that you create in QUTS Hero 501, um, you cannot roll back, uh, back from those. Okay, um, so we'll move straight into some of the uh, the new features. So one of the uh, uh, cool new features is being able to disable USB ports. So this is a, uh, a feature that's uh, been asked for several times, especially for people worried about a bit of security so that you want to go in there and restrict things. So what you can do is you can open up into the control panel, go to external device. It will open up on the uh, UPS screen by default, but there is a USB menu at the top and it allows you to disallow um, USB devices. And you can choose to disallow all USB devices um, or just the storage ones. So you can pick which version of, uh, of, of blocking the USB ports that you want. And um, there is a little warning pop up here if you click this eye. So it will even disable things like the USB one touch copy, uh, things like that. So um, I would generally um, really make sure that you need to use it. And there's a list of devices that it's going to block there as well. Um, so that's uh, one of the first features. Um, another one is that you can um, force your users uh, to use two-step verification now. Um, so if we go into the, uh, the security tab and go across to two-step verification, we can see I've got a few users and two-step verification is disabled um, for everybody. It, in the past, it was always an individual preference whether the user wanted to use two-step verification or not. Um, from this pane now, you can check the status of everybody and you can also uh, control whether it's forced upon them or not as an administrator. Um, so we've got the uh, the admin account, which is disabled. We've got the Craig account, which is the, uh, the account I'm using now. Um, and I've got my colleagues, Tam and Tom, some accounts on here. So if I wanted to, to force those to do it, I can do it on an individual basis, um, say with just Tom. So it's saying it's incomplete. So the next time Tom tries to sign in, um, he will be prompted that he must uh, sign up for two-step verification before he can continue. Um, another option to do it, if I put that back to disabled, is you can change it to uh, local groups. Uh, so I did add Tom and Tam into the sales group. So if I was to apply that there and then go back and look at the local users, we can see that both uh, Tom and Tam have got the requirement now uh, to use two-step verification. Um, so before they can log in and perform any other operations on the NAS, um, they must complete the two-step verification uh, with that setting. So that's a, a new feature that we've, uh, we've recently added as well. Um, one of the next sort of big features that I guess a lot of people have asked for since we did QTS5 or QUTS Hero 5, not everybody liked the size of these icons. They thought we went too big. Um, so what you can do now is you can click your name at the top and go to Options. Go to the wallpaper screen. If you scroll right, you'll be able to see it. And there is an option for the desktop icon and font size. Uh, it's default to large, but you can change it to small. It doesn't change the spacing or anything like that. It just gives you some smaller icons. Um, 
<clears throat> so let me just apply that so it saves it. Um, so now we can have the uh, the smaller icons for anybody that wanted the smaller icons. So that's uh, a pretty big feature a lot of people have been asking for. Uh, the next thing I'll move on to is some improvements in file station. And whilst we've changed quite a few things in here, um, the one I'm going to focus on now is sharing shared folders. So previously, if you had a uh, a folder within a uh, within a share, for example, so you were always able to right click on this folder and go to share and choose to share that out to um, whoever you needed to via whatever method. Um, but if you were to right click on the shared folders themselves in the left hand menu, um, the share menu was always missing. But now it's been added there. So if you want to uh, share out an entire shared folder from the root. Um, you're able to do that uh, from here, from uh, email, social networks, or just create a share link that you can copy and send out yourself or to other NAS users. So you can do that now um, directly in the left-hand menu. Previously, it was only um, on subfolders within shares that you were able to do that. Um, so now we'll move into uh, QUTS Hero. So now we do support um, uh, Microsoft Windows Search Protocol. So this is both for QUTS Hero and QTS. Um, so with the improvements uh, we've made with Samba, so if I was to open up a, uh, a Windows virtual machine here, for example, so I've got a, a Windows 11 here, um, the search function down here, if you want to type and search for a, an item, it's an instant search, Windows indexes everything. Um, to add the, uh, the NAS into it, it's not as simple as you might think where you'd search, go through the Windows search settings. Uh, what you've got to do is add the network location to Windows and then it will automatically be um, indexed in the search. So if you open up your Explorer and go to this PC in your Windows, if you just right click in some blank space, you'll have some um, separate options. Oh, sorry, I think in Windows 11 it's up the top, uh, three dots at the top. So if you go there and go add a network location, so we're not mapping a network drive, we're adding a network location. You'll get a small wizard and you've got to choose a custom network location and this can be websites, network locations, FTP sites. Um, so I'm going to click next and now it wants the uh, internet or network address. So I've already typed it previously testing it out. So here's the um, IP address of the NAS. So if I go back over there, so this is the 10.10.2010, uh, 10, that's the uh, the NAS name. So if I come back here, I've created it to the public share and then I'm going to click next. Um, you can now name it something a bit better than the auto provided one. So if I say TVS-H1288X and click next, um, I won't open it, but you click finish um, and there's the network location that's been added. Um, so now it's been added, it should be added automatically into the uh, the Windows uh, search protocol um, so that you can do instant searches. It may take a little while to index everything, um, but that's going to uh, get that up and running for you. So that's uh, TVS-H1288X added there. So you can double click in there, see that test folder we created earlier, um, but that's the uh, the Windows search protocol. Um, something that we did um, already add in um, QTS5 and QUTS Hero 5 um, for x86 based NAS, so um, anything with an uh, Intel or an AMD CPU, um, is that we were allowing you to uh, attach uh, external drives or storage to the QNAP uh, via uh, USB, for example, um, where you could have that formatted with XFAT. So previously, before QTS5, um, there was a, a small license fee, I think it was about $1.50, something like that, a very low cost item, but there was royalties attached, so we, we did have to charge. Um, but that's all changed now with QTS5, and now not only is it on um, the Intel or AMD CPUs, we've now rolled it back so that um, you can use the XFAT file system um, on ARM-based models as well without having to purchase the XFAT license. Um, so it, as I say, this is already a change. Anybody with an Intel or an AMD now is running QTS or QUTS Hero 5, uh, you've already got that. Um, uh, but yes, now with the, uh, the beta here, um, the ARM-based models will have it as well. So the lower cost options will have it as well. Um, so moving on to the next improvement that I can show you here is the network and virtual switch. Um, so when you go down and look at your interfaces, uh, we've now displayed the MTU value. So the MTU values on show. Uh, previously, if you wanted to see the MTU value, so this would be for things like jumbo frames, things like that. Um, if you wanted to see that, it wasn't uh, an at a glance view that you could see here with all the network information. You had to go into the three dots for the adapter. Uh, go to configure and there was your configured jumbo frame setting so you can change it here to a different one if you want to um, but now it's showing everything what it's configured at not just um, the network speed or what the, the adapter is actually capable of it's showing you uh, even the MTU value now as well uh, which is something that we never had before this uh, this beta firmware 
Um, now this one is uh, just for uh, QUTS Hero. Uh, so for anybody with QUTS Hero, you'll know that we've got an absolutely massive um, uh, volume size, pool size of one petabyte uh, with the ZFS file system. Um, so it allows you to create really mega sized um, uh, volumes, especially if you're using expansion chassis to aggregate together. Um, for example, if you've got our large uh, 24 bay NAS full of 20 terabyte drives and then you attach 16 16 bay expansions to it you know you can get quite a lot of capacity there um, so if you want to use that space the the one petabyte volumes was really cool um, so the next step if i go to create a new shared folder and go start um, you can see here we've now updated that to five petabytes uh, so if i was to create a new share called test i'm going to set it to thin provisioning because i definitely don't have five petabytes in this nas i'm going to change that to five and petabytes so that's now going to let me create uh, five petabytes uh, volumes and pools um, within the NAS so we've increased that from one petabyte uh, to five petabytes uh, with QTS the, the max volume size is still uh, 250 terabytes um, the the max storage pool size is 308 terabytes um, that varies depending how much RAM you have but if you've got um, I think 8 to 16 gig of RAM or more you can use um, those upper limits with QTS uh, but with QUTS here we've now gone all the way uh, to five petabytes which is absolutely fantastic for uh, the larger users that we have that are using a lot more data, a lot of expansions with their QNAPs. Um, another really cool feature is anybody using Virtualization Station um, is able to now use our QUTS Cloud uh, platform, um, so which is a virtual NAS OS. So if you want to do any testing or anything like that, so within the uh, the App Center, uh, we do have our Virtualization Station application. So I think we might put it under utilities now. There we go. We've got Virtualization Station. Um, so within Virtualization Station, you can run VMs for lots of different things. And in the past, we did have something called VQTS, um, which was virtual QTS as an operating system. But now we've got uh, QUTS Cloud, uh, which is effectively based off the uh, the QTS operating system. Um, but there was a license fee to pay previously. But now if you're running that uh, QUTS Cloud environment in Virtualization Station, it is completely free. Uh, the only requirement is that you must have the uh, license center version 1.7.5. Um, you can see right now the latest uh, one is still a little lower than that. So keep your eye out for when 1.7.5 of the license center releases. Um, you will need to both be on um, QTS or QUTS Hero uh, 5.0.1. Uh, the public beta as well as having the license center of 1.7.5 or higher uh, to get that. Um, so now there's one other change that's been made is the uh, the minimum um, Samba level um, that we've got uh, enabled in the in, in the operating system um, has been changed to SMB2. So anybody that uh, is running older hardware, um, uh, perhaps, you know, older, say Windows XP or even older than that, we have some customers with some legacy hardware where they just can't change it. Um, so anybody using one of our newer NAS with this new operating system, uh, you will see that the lowest SMB version is by default set to two. Um, previously, we've always um, had this set to one. So you can see here with this setting, the supported versions are SMB 2, 2.1 and 3. Um, now, it doesn't mean we've removed SMB 1. If you click the drop down, SMB 1 is still there, so you can still add it back. It's just a note for anybody that uh, may have compatibility issues with older operating systems um, trying to navigate to file shares on the QNAP. Um, we have changed the, the lowest level by default uh, to 2. Um, one is still there, you can turn it on as I show you there. So that's um, in the network and file services, WinMac, NFS and WebDAV and click the advanced options and you can just change that bottom one so that you can have um, uh, more compatibility with the uh, the older SMB. Um, if everything's working without it, definitely don't enable it. It's better for security if it's not enabled um, all the way down to SMB1. Um, things just work so much faster with the new SMB as well. Um, it's much better, much more efficient at transferring. Um, so there are quite a few um, other uh, things. The, if you go look at the, uh, the release note list, it is absolutely mega. Um, so as you scroll through, there's a lot of different options in there. Uh, one I did want to highlight um, is the QTS specific one. So if I scroll down here, we should be able to find it. Um, so it's now to ensure the availability of your data, um, storage and snapshots now supports replace and detach. Um, so what that basically means is that if you've got a spare drive bay on your QNAP, um, it's going to allow you to put um, the new disk in 
to the QNAP. Um, so let's say your disk hasn't completely failed, it's just got a warning, maybe some smart errors are appearing on the drive. Um, it's going to allow you to effectively uh, copy the data from the disk that's going bad to the spare disk and then you can safely detach the faulty disk. So rather than just yanking out the one that's going bad and replacing it with the new one, which still works as well, if you want to be a bit more proactive about it and have that data copy over before you pull and swap, um, you can do that now in QTS. Um, so this is a, a specific feature just for QTS. This one is not on uh, QUTS Hero. Um, now the, the release notes list here is absolutely massive. There's a lot of different uh, functions and things that I didn't uh, pull out there. I pulled out the ones that I thought were interesting, thought I'd mention a couple of warnings just so that people don't get caught out. Um, so if anybody does have any questions um, about the new uh, QUTS Hero or QTS 501 public beta, uh, please let me know in the, the comment section down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye.